some students become interns and work for companies, intern in multiple companies. Some students don't graduate and just work directly with the companies. Like the story of these two designers that we're going to meet today. Today we're going to meet with Alexis and CSJ, two well-known local designers. Hello, welcome to another episode of our Conversations with Designers. And I have special guests here, famous guests, who are, uh, you guys already know, but I'll still have them introduce themselves. So, hi everyone, uh, I'm Alexis Colliado. Um, I'm a product designer at Caliber. And I also do a podcast called Roots. So, I, with Roots, I interview famous designers that I've met, like Ellie and CSJ. <laughs> Um, I've done over 35 episodes. Recently, we do UX Almasal with <laughs> CSJ. So we ramble about random stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we're also doing a conference called conference. UX Plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's happening on August 24. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. Um, I'm Christian Sanase. I'm a designer. Um, initially started uh, designing 13 years ago with Ellie <laughs> and um, yeah right now I'm, I work in First Circle um, setting up the design team um, aside from that yeah we have the podcast with Alexis and then I've been doing UX workshops as well um, just trying to help out the, the bigger uh, UX community um, as started by the guys from UXPH and mm -hmm. building on top of yeah. their success yeah. yeah so Alex tell us about why you started Roots in the first place so for Roots, um, I was always part of the UX page meetups as a student. And after every meetup, you, you'd have these um, dinners or coffee shop like Conversation. stuff, conversations, uh, conversations yeah. uh, where most meetings. of the speakers go um, and all of the other passionate, the passionate designers go. And so in these settings, I get to talk with them, converse with them. and. Uh, try to understand their story and learn about uh, what their work is mm -hmm. and so I was really inspired I thought I, I was really lucky and privileged to be even be in that room I guess um, so I wanted to democratize that co those yeah. conversations yeah. Uh, and scale it to so that other people can learn from it I guess yeah. um, and that's uh, where Roots came out of, uh, so it's like my side project since 2017. Uh, I think I was a third year student back then. Um, but then I, I, it really became very consistent only around December mm -hmm. last year up to yeah. now. Yeah, you were jumping before. Just lately, you were you are now doing yeah. more weekly. You know? Right now, I do weekly episodes, so it has over 35 episodes right now so, so and you're today, being mentioned yeah. by other podcasts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was mentioned by my ins inspiration no uh, uh, the, pod the podcast I was inspired by uh, which was Design Details so, so yeah but they, they, they butchered my name though <laughs> <laughs> they butchered yeah Collado 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 alright Tell us about yourself and how you started. You were an illustrator before. You were, yeah. you were a web designer before. Right. Now you're jumping into the user experience field. Sure. I, I, you know, that's that's a common thing for many designers. Well. Sure. Tell us about that story. Yeah. Um, I initially started designing when I was in US Auto Parts. Like at that time when we were working together, that was 2007. Um, even though like I was called senior web designer and I was neither a senior or a web designer. <laughs> I was basically doing gifts on like <laughs> gifts of car parts, basically. But like I was surrounded by really oh, yeah. smart um, web designers, like front end developers, and then web designers yeah. themselves. And then like I learned from just being surrounded by that. And in my freelance work, I was doing more more of the typical UI design um, uh, for very different clients. But I stumbled upon doing websites for athletes, and then that eventually led me to yeah. You yeah. being famous because you have 
you have a picture of Kobe Bryant, you know, and, and <laughs> yeah. you did the web- websites for yeah. Wade, right? Ba- basically, all these athletes outsourced to the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, very cheaply, I was designing websites for Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, James Harden, yeah. Usain Bolt. Um, since I-, I got a bit of momentum, I allowed that for me to build my own studio. Yeah. Um, eventually resigned from the, the company we were uh, together with for three years and then started my own company and then that allowed me to scale up the operation like the freelance so essentially at that time it was just me designing in Photoshop and then slicing it and then <laughs> automatically generating HTML but that allowed me to really have a bit more discipline in UI and like work with front-end developers kind of like plant the seeds to what eventually was a UX career um, um, moving forward yeah. yeah and I remember you you won a, uh, a, a t-shirt con- <laughs> contest yeah. it's one of your designs right? I think yeah. it's the Tamaro one right? yeah the, the, the Kalabao yeah. the Kalabao yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the so, Tamaro yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, like at that time, I was 19 or 20 years old. Like uh, I, w- I loved the de- designing, like illustrating, because it was uh, an avenue for me for expression. It's like uh, artist versus designer conversation, right? Like, and on one end, like I was doing T-shirts. On the other end, I was doing websites. Yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, yeah. that's a nice also. Yeah. A direction of designers and yeah. really artist to designer. Yeah. And that's a. I also noticed that. Yeah. Quite but cool. eventually, like I. Even though like I still have those skills, I, I use it just to um, like have a bit of difference when when whatever I design. But I'm primarily a designer now, and actually mostly. Um, actually, mostly like, ma- looks like you're managing now on your own. You yeah. Matured from being a producer to <laughs> to one of them strategic thinking guys. Ho- right? Hopefully, I matured. <laughs> but yeah, like um, um, it, it it goes with uh, it goes with. Like the the career, I guess. Like you, you have to, you, you can sense your growth and like you can sense where you can grow more. Um, I, I allowed myself to just go with the flow and like uh, it has led me to whatever I'm doing right now. Um, of course, you every now and then you'd miss like actually designing that, yeah, and that's yeah. why um, every now and then I pivot or like change companies or change direction like ever so slightly. Um, but yeah, like it always goes back to actually yeah. just designing. Yeah. Alex, let's talk about you interning a couple of times and then going to eventually find your work. Ah, uh, yeah. So for my career, I interned five times. Uh, the first one was with actually CSG. It was a funny story. Uh, I originally <laughs> interned it for you. He originally, I originally wanted to apply for Create because uh-huh. I think CSG was putting out a lot of ads <laughs> on Facebook, and I, I read uh, <laughs> most of them. Like he was a really good marketer. Uh, mm-hmm. with you're you're done for that. <laughs> um, but I I applied and no one got back to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this friend Aaron. Um, he was a UX designer at a company called Jump Digital. Uh-huh. So I applied there. I asked him, "Hey, can I apply?" Okay, I applied. I magically got in. And lo and behold, CSG is <laughs> His company got acquired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess it was fate. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, You've had several internships, right? Like, yeah. You are you are a model for students who want to go into design. Probably, but there, I I know people who have done seven or six. <laughs> like that. How um, many have you done? Five. But I think mine was hyper focused, right? Um, yeah, on design. Because with CSG, I did three months of like more of the UI. Slash UX grant work, and then the second one was with freelancer.com. Um, the third one was with Mika mm. at New Works. New Works. Um, and then by the time that I needed to do my official internship for for my degree, I interned at uh, Agoda Travel Booking Platform. It was uh, headquartered in Thailand. Um, and the last one was with Adoption.ph. So it's really more of Exposing myself to different kinds of industries, um, trying both product and agencies, and I figured out that okay, uh, I think I like doing product more. So you also now are explaining, teaching what you've learned to other you in your own YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. You know, slowly teaching what you've learned even in your internship. In your, um, so what 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 are general things you've learned so far? Oh, I think the biggest learning is um, I. For my career, I found that networking is the number one 
Mm. Oh, because Same. you network in yeah. several internships with pretty good people. Mm-hmm. I mean, sila Riza, sila Ika, CSJ, mm-hmm. di ba? I think uh, a really good concept to draw on is um, the canvas strategy mm-hmm. by Ryan Holiday. Oh, okay. So, he uh, sort of like giving a canvas for other people to paint on. Nice. So, it's really, ab- it's really nice, abstract. Nice, but yeah. when you think about it, it's really about um, giving value to your potential mentors. Like for example, you're you're one of my mentors, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm honored. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and when when I think of giving uh, a canvas for you, I'm thinking of hey, how can I help Ellie build the XPH mm-hmm. uh, even more? Um, so. That's how I formed U- UXOC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I gave the UX page like a ton of volunteers. Yeah. So now you also yeah. have your UX, uh, your own conference, mm-hmm. which is very nice. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about later. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think the best advice and the best exp- uh, the best tip that I could give for people is to give value to your potential mentors mm-hmm. in any in any way possible. Like put them in the limelight, I guess. In That's what I'm doing now, now with Roots. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. oh, that's very good. That's why you did Roots. Now. So tell us about you guys now have a your own podcast together. Yeah. Tell us about what how that happened. <laughs> what was your idea there? Uh, it was just basically a Facebook message that I said to Alexis. Alexis, let's do a podcast. <laughs> and then he mentioned, okay, when? <laughs> it's just that. And then uh, Alexis mentioned, what's the title? And then I mentioned UX Almosal. <laughs> so it's like very direct, like one answer, one question. Uh, so it's, it's, so I, I think that's like my what, origin story. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really just like that. You know? uh, so what are, you, what are you gonna talk about in this podcast? What are, what are, what's your direction? So, about? so I guess Roots is more of like the origin stories of Filipino designers, right? Mm. Um, but UX Almosal is more conversational around certain topics. Mm. Like for the first episode we did like uh what h- how do you become a product designer in the Philippines we discussed like the differences uh, between doing it like what I said earlier doing mm-hmm. doing design at an agency or a, a product company uh, so that's like one specific topic and CSJ and I, and I are like probably winging it <laughs> but um we're thinking of topics to talk about every single week uh, yeah and I, I guess the inspiration comes from us just listening to other bo- podcasts, like them talking about it and like just trying to get inspired by if there's going to be that type of conversation elsewhere, why isn't there conversation like that over here? Like yeah, the, yeah. the same thing we're doing right yeah. now, um, that avenue for like discourse or like discussion um, tends to happen in closed doors within companies yeah. that are Sometimes. solving big problems. <laughs> Very nice. Eh? You yeah, a lot of learnings. Yeah, uh, actually, like you, you learn more from the people surrounding you. Like, uh, it's the same with reading books, right? Like when you read books, like you tend to apply it right away. But it, when you stop reading books, you tend to like stick to your gut and like, stick to whichever. So continuous learning. It's not just like reading or like just being in a company. It's conversation. Mm-hmm. So that's what like I I really love doing and like. Um, conversation that's put in front of an audience um, um, typically invites more um, either further discussion or like contradiction or yeah. criticism, which that's, is that's should, be healthy. Yeah, yeah, should, should be healthy. Should be. Yeah. Um, if someone disagrees with me, I'm super okay with that. Uh, yeah, like, it. Like, it's okay. a good experience. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's tension. It's good. Uh, you, mm. you, you can learn from each yeah. other through tension. Like uh, tension. There's tension because there's two varying types of opinion and then whenever there's two like opposite things like there tends to be like they might know something that I don't know yet and if it depends on you if you're open to yeah, hear yeah. about it so yeah okay so now you guys also created your UX uh, conference tell us about the UX conference what's the story behind there and <laughs> what 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 do you guys think about uh, making a conference uh, I guess it's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> just, just, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think CSG would know more of the backstory, but uh, it's really uh, about um, getting speakers that we personally want. Yeah, yeah. Um, getting to hear about people uh, who are from big tech, 
also not only of course in the western world but also uh, locally like we have, we have someone from grab right um we have someone from dropbox mm. twitter mm. google google, google uh, yeah. we also have you mm. right from gg summit uh, denise hack and obvious yeah. um, so I, i'll tell you a story mm. sure sure go ahead go, go ahead, ahead. Yeah. when you asked me yeah sure and then you showed me the poster that you guys yeah. are running conference i asked Ange. Yeah. Ange, you uh, did CSJ invite you here? So, yeah. Yes. Uh, are you going? Because if you're not going, I'm not going. If you're going, I'm going. That's good. That's good. Pero nakakasa ano lang yun? Parang kasi motivation ko to talk to Ange. You know, yeah. and you, you really learn from Ange. Sure. So for me, oh, uh, I'd love to talk again with Ange because she's so busy these days. Eh. Kaya, right. When she said yes, yes, I said yes to. Okay, then I'll say yes. To. <laughs> Yeah, it's a chance for us to get together, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. the form of like a big, big yeah, yeah, in front of a thousand people. But then, like, yeah. it's friends. That's my that's my confession for you. That's, <laughs> that's all good. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, but, yeah. So that's why for me it looks it looks fun. It's going, mm. It looks like it's going to be a, a fun conversation. Yeah. yeah. So when you when you got people na uh, yeah. you you organize it na and then yeah uh, uh, essentially like um yeah as Alexis mentioned we wanted to get people that. We admire or like have conversation, but at the at the root of it, at the roots of it, at the roots, <laughs> at, the, of at, the, it. at the root of it. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's more of like just gathering inspiration from what Grafica Manila has done. So we're partnering yeah, with yeah. Um, the same organizers of Grafica Manila. Yeah, and Grafica Manila is known for you yeah, know, conferences and co- conference, and then very successfully like yeah. inviting people over, yeah. like flying them, mm-hmm. and it's not just in the Philippines, like in Southeast Asia and this side of the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Like having them, like having foreigners or like having people that have been there, done that, and go over here and see the context of the Philippines puts them, like for the speakers, a different perspective and gives us an idea of like, wow, there's so much more than what we're doing right now. So what they've done for the creative industry, we'd love to do for like specific sub industries, um, in this case, like UX. Um, and yeah, like uh, uh, just so happened that Um, I was good friends with Aram. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You already, you, you, yeah. you've done work with them before, the yeah. Uh, you and I think Rico also. Rico, had designed yeah. Before, like we, so we were close friends, uh-huh. and he was interested as well. Like he had no idea so much about UX, yeah, exactly. but he he knew we were kind of in doing into it. Yeah, yeah, into yeah. it. So, so you just chatted with him. I want to yeah. do this. Can you can you help me? Yeah. When start and and there was some overlap uh, already because like s- some of the. Uh, speakers he was trying to invite were already into product design like he's invited yeah, like um, yeah. UX practitioners yeah. before from uh, huge from like different agencies so he had some sort of taste to it and then uh, for us like doing all of this it allows for us to build on the success of what UXPH has done but also like broaden the scope as well like if we put the, the same amount of discipline in like doing a conference kind of like gets it a bit more known like which uh, at the end in the end helps us through the industry as a whole like even though you wouldn't get like super like deeper topics in the in these initial conferences you'd have more eyes yeah. on, on it and more eyes and more um uh i i guess people knowing about ux and talking about it and yeah. talking about it Um, serves the the bigger industry yeah. as well. Yeah. So for, for me, uh, when you guys started this, I, I, I was really happy. Okay? This is something I was expecting talaga for for to happen. Eh. I was hoping I've seen it in the UX society, na, diba? in, in, in your community that you started, and I'm seeing it uh, in the the number of even agencies now that are offering UX. Even developers, now, dev houses are starting to have their own UX teams. So for me, it, it, something like this really, really makes sense. And it's, I'm personally very happy coming, seeing it like five years ago na parang ako, wala akong makausap. <laughs> Couldn't talk to anyone about UX now. Everyone's going there. It's, it's really nice to see you guys are doing this. So tell me about, um, can you tell me some tips now for people who are interns like you or students like you who are young and going to UX field? What can you tell them? Uh, I definitely strongly uh, feel that people shouldn't do random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <thank God. laughs> yeah. Um, so it should be structured or planned at least. Yeah, be intentional in building your career. Uh, 
that's personally what have catapulted mine like deep by leaps and bounds mm. by being being very strategic about who I'm talking to what I'm reading what events I'm going to what internships I'm taking right mm. you, you want to have like a long term goal um, and if you're just starting now right uh, if you want to get into UX you want to think about a long term goal mm. already yeah. so you're not wasting your time doing random stuff so what's your long term goal? Uh, well, in broad strokes, before uh, when I was a student, I told myself, okay, I want to be a design leader, mm-hmm. and I had to find out what design leader meant. Yes, what, what for does myself. that looks like? Uh, uh, like does that mean you're a manager, or whatever, mm-hmm. or are you a respected professional in your industry, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to find the answer for myself, right? Um, and I and I remember you having you asking as self critique. You did that. You did that for us. Eh? How would you improve? And that's very good for uh, young kids to know. Mm-hmm. You should do that. Ask for, I know, for a critique. No? Yeah, um, definitely get a lot of mentors. That's the number one thing. Uh, think about who who are your inspirations, who are your idols, who are the people you admire. Find a way to give value to them. So once you're in the you're the in the, you're an insider. In their world, like you're in the in circle, uh, you wanna exploit that. <laughs> um, learn as much as you can, soak up all of their knowledge, and the most underrated tip is while you're doing that, while while you're while you're uh, interacting with people on the top, you wanna teach everything that you, you're learning mm. to people who don't know as much as you. Yeah. Right? As you also learn while you teach. Mm. That's a very good thing. So when you teach everything that you're learning. Right. You're, you're gonna get, um, I guess, more support from people around you. You're gonna build community. Uh, you're gonna be more happy. Uh, you're gonna be more, more fulfilled doing your work, doing your internships. Uh, and um, there are a lot of positive side effects of teaching what you're what you're learning. Right, you're teaching as you learn, mm-hmm. um, and that's gonna really help you like um, uh, accelerate your. So when you're when you're teaching to others, right? You, you want to mentor other people too. You want to write about it. You know, you want to be very, like write status posts that are opinionated, uh, even though no one knows you. Right? Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't have experience, that's totally fine. Uh, and eventually, your your people are gonna notice, and you're gonna drive out uh, your value as a designer. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna get any job you want. Yeah. Nice. Right. Come on, Seche. Tell us, uh, maybe how would you inspire um, those who have followed a similar career path na coming from web design, sure. or maybe graphic design, or you know, illustrations. Uh, what's your word of advice, ins- uh, inspirational quotes for people who want to follow your path? Um, yeah, follow Alexis Kaliad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'd say... <laughs> Um, like I, I guess, I guess uh, stick to what you're good at mm-hmm. um, initially. Um, if you're not good at anything, try to be good at something. Um, I, I'd say that's what I did. Like I stuck to, I'd say visual um, initially. I stuck to that, and then when, when I could could see the ceiling of what I could do, I either grew my comfort zone or like stepped out of my comfort zone to learn something new. Um, and then I learned complementary skills. So complementary skills in terms of not just hard skills but soft skills as well. Like um, yeah, you're very good at soft, soft skills. I mean, yeah. talking to people, getting clients. Yeah, uh, uh, like that, that that like pushed me in very different directions. Like I could say I'm right in the middle of like being introverted and extroverted, and like being um, like being in sales, for example, yeah. puts you in that super extroverted yeah, 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 position, yeah. and you, you get super uncomfortable. And even managing teams. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and ma- managing teams. And I, I could say I'm not I'm not the best at like soft skills, and hopefully I've improved so far. But it's continuous, right? Like it's continuous improvement. So it's basically just learning on the fly, sticking to what you're good at, sticking to your gut, and then when your gut could <laughs> only take you. Uh, to a certain extent, learn from external sources, from talking to people, from books. Like that's um, that's something I could say I've only done honestly in the last four, three, four years or so. Um, initially, like I, I wasn't as like intentional in my career um, before. I just stuck with, I just went with the flow, right? Like I, 
I tried to maximize illustration and then like when there was still money in illustration I went to like web design and then when I couldn't find clients I sold my company like <laughs> kind of like that right like I stuck to yeah I admire what you've done kasi parang you have that grit talaga eh. kasi <laughs> you have you have your times na wala ka tagang pera you, yeah. you, you figure out how to, to make yeah, money yeah you, you, you figure out like I think like that discomfort puts you in a position to really stick to your gut to really like convince yourself that okay like there's n- nobody that's gonna give me money if I just sit around like just keep doing my yeah. thing yeah. Like, and you'd g- your gut would tell you that okay uh, there's so many opportunities out there there's so many people doing amazing things Um, try to follow their footsteps or like try to like read their interviews or like try to listen to Roots and UXPH and yes, UX, sorry, UX uh, Almusal <laughs> things yeah, like yeah, that yeah. so um, just being very aware and very open allows you to strategize for yourself and then figure out what, what's best for you okay. and yeah so, so final note lang, uh, invite them to uh, the, your podcast your conference oh yeah um For the podcast, not so much. Like you can <laughs> choose not to listen to it. We're not earning money from it anyway. So, it's just but fun. the conference, uh, yeah, <laughs> the UX Plus conference is happening on August 24, uh, Saturday. Uh, we have some early bird tickets left. All other early bird gets uh, a shirt, a free shirt. Yeah. It's also like it's also almost like 20, 30 like cheaper than the full price yeah. at the door price. Go get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any final words? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank thanks, you. thanks, thank uh, Ali. I really enjoyed talking with CSJ and Alexis. I hope you learned from them as as much as I have. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. See you next time. <laughs>